This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Okay, now we got you. There we go. Um, <laughs> What's going on, Big O? Cam, this is just an extension of what we've seen. This is what I told Dolphin fans because anybody complaining right now, nitpicking about certain things, it's silly because this is a new coach, new offense, um, a lot of new players to the to the mix on offense. You don't really have, like everybody in the NFL, doesn't really have a ton of time to really prepare for the season the way you'd like. There's a lot of sloppy football being played. Miami has looked like the better and more prepared teams in their in their practices against the Bucks and the Eagles, in their preseason games overall, and then today against the Patriots. That's why I say today was just an extension of what we've seen the entire offseason with Mike McDaniel, a young coach that has done a pretty damn good job overall of preparing his team. Thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I thought Mike McDaniel had a really good day uh, calling plays. Like you said, the offense wasn't on full full display today. You know, I talked with Tyreek Hill right after the game off the field, and his first reaction was, you know, it was good to get a win, but we know we can be better offensively. And when you beat a team by 13 and you know you can be much better, I think that's a good way to start week one. Now, you know, there were some throws that Tua could have had we want back. There was also some plays where, you know, receivers didn't run the smoothest routes or, or Tyreek you know, dropped, Tyre dropped Tyre dropped a beautiful dart in the middle of the field. He exactly. should have caught that. Is that uh, exactly? And, you, and, and they right can't run that. the ball. And you can't and run they, the ball. They, exactly. Two and a half yards. You you know yep. you can't do that. And so and so those are those are areas of improvement. And I thought Mike McDaniel said it perfectly after the game when he said that you know this is still the defense's team until so the offense proves otherwise, right? And so right. the defense is is the, we're going to talk all offseason. We talked all offseason about Tua and Tyreek and how it's all going to look. But at the end of the day, the defense is still just the best part of the team right now, and the offense has plenty of potential, plenty of room for growth, which is good. Uh, but right now, the defense is the one holding things together. And so I think that you go into next week, you're going to obviously need to, to play better offensively to beat a, a Lamar Jackson-led Ravens team. Um, but I, I think that you at least showed today that you were what we thought you were, at least the second best team in the AFC. You're clearly better than the Patriots. And from there, you just kind of see what your ceiling is going forward from there. So I take more positives and negatives out of uh, today's game. 270, a touchdown, no interceptions. I'll take that right. every day of the week and twice on Sundays. Go look at some of the numbers of quarterbacks all over the place. They're throwing, they're throwing interceptions, and they don't have nearly as many yards. So uh, I think somebody pointed out that outside of uh, the Ravens, Miami had the second biggest uh, win points-wise. So, you know, again, yeah. uh, there's not really a lot to complain about. And I will say this. While, of course, there should be a, there, there's a lot of improvement they need to make on offense, but yeah. the fourth down and seven call – to have the balls yeah. to make the call, to yeah. have the confidence in your quarterback, and then the receiver yep. not only made the catch but then broke the tackle to then spring himself to the touchdown, all three guys. You got to give a lot of right. credit to all three guys. The call, the throw, and then the play after that. That's I, oh, I, I think say, say whatever you want. They're not perfect, but that was a clutch-ass play. That's the one that really broke the game open. Yeah, that's my favorite play of the game. Uh, you know, obviously, you you watch that play. Um, you know, I also did Mama like the did Mama pass. didn't raise a fool, I guess. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That I thought what was so dope about that play, and I talked with Tyreek about it walking off the field, and he, he gave the response that I think he again said in the locker room about – you know, Mike McDaniel having big balls and that he needs a wheelbarrow to carry him, carry him around. And so uh, <laughs> that was sort of that was uh, that was Tyreek's feel. And I know the locker room loves it because what it shows, even if you don't get it right, you're showing trust in your offense. You're showing trust in your quarterback. I'd say that if you don't trust your offense, you don't trust your quarterback or you're a little bit conservative. You pump that ball away. You pin the Patriots deep and you go into halftime with a lead. And everybody's yep. like, okay, cool. That's what you expect. Calling that fourth and seven it takes guts. And then Tua hitting Jalen Waddle in stride in the middle and then Jalen taking it to the crib. That looked like back in Alabama days. That looked like they right. were they were taking it back beautiful. to Tuscaloosa. And so uh, I I loved it to me. Like everybody obsesses about the deep ball. But to me, Tua's at his best when he's making passes like that where he's, he's having a, a very small uh, area to throw to and he's thinning the needle, th threading the needle and putting it right on the money. That, that to me, is the best version of Tua. 
wait, wait till the, the offensive line and the running game can actually get the linebackers to suck it up a little bit more. And then that middle becomes even more open. Watch how much more dangerous Tua becomes at that point. But again, you've got to get the running game going because if not, yeah, you're gonna absolutely. Keep, you're, 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 you're not going to you know, get to the point you need. And your quarterback's not going to get to the point you need because you just can't live your life without running the ball. They're going to have to have more success running the ball. Okay, so you talked about it. Christian Wilkins, um, oh, Emmanuel Ogba, uh, X, Cater Kahu, um, Javon Holland, Brandon Jones, Sealer. Uh, it, it, it just, you know, the names go on and on here today. Uh, all kinds of defensive players made all kinds of big plays. You know, there were times where they bent a little bit and the running game, especially early on, the running game was gouging them a little bit. But then they would find a way to stifle the drive one way or another. And it's a lot of those names that I just talked about that they just came up with timely ass plays throughout, man. Yep. Yeah, I think even back to that first series, that play where I don't know why yeah. Mac Jones tried X. Uh, he's <laughs> Mac Jones should have had some scouting. Exactly. Mac Jones should have Mac Jones should have asked us, and we could have told him how X and Devonte Parker looked in practice for many years in Dolphins land. Uh, but Xavier is, is draped on Devonte, has a great coverage, and Javon's over there and gets the pick. And it's sort of that duo ball that you want to see from a top corner safety duo. And I, you know, I talked to Javon Holland. He said he wants him and Xavier to be at the top cornerback safety duo in the league. He said that he wants them to be spoken of how Duran James and J.C. Jackson are spoken of. And when you make plays like that, that that gets you in that that area. And I think you hit it on the point, hit it on the money. I was worried that drive because they were running the ball down the field. And the one element that I talked about in pregame on NFL Network was that, look, these the Patriots have ran the ball successfully over the Dolphins recently with the, Damian Harris, with Damian Harris and running the ball. I think the last two games they played, they had 259 yards rushing combined in those two games. And so I figured if they were going to beat them today, it wasn't going to be with Mac Jones' arm. It was going to be running the ball. And that play really, really stifled any progress the Patriots offense had. And from the rest of the day, it seemed like they were dink and dunk on offense, running screens and not much success on the ground. And so I think the defense deserves a lot of credit. Um, they they brought back all 11 starters, but they've got contributions from new guys, too. You mentioned Cater Kuhui. Um, you know, he's a guy where we our big question coming into the game is how do you replace Byron Jones? Um the, the Patriots didn't have any success against the, the other corners either. Like, Xavier was balling, but it wasn't like, you know, they were picking on Nick Needham. They weren't picking on Cater. They weren't picking on, you know, Kean Crossing when he was in there. That, that's pretty stout play for a bunch of guys who honestly were expected to be fourth and fifth uh, cornerbacks coming into the season. And so that that's what most impressed me about this team. Uh, a couple stop dominant plays by Christian Wilkins inside, Zach Sealer inside. You know, I think that. This team has the potential to have a have a top five, top seven defense, and they showed it why today. And so another challenge next week against the Marlins. By the way, we got but, we got to stop. Yeah. We have this image of these corners, and McDaniel told us already this week. He goes, "You guys look at them as young. We don't." And the problem yeah. is, we've got I've gotten a taste of Cater Kohu now the last couple of weeks. You get yeah. to talk yeah. to him. You watch him. He's mature beyond his years. He's not, he's not what he doesn't walk like a wide eyed rookie. He walks in like a dude that says, You want to underestimate me? Underestimate me? Good. I'm glad you're doing that because I'm going to have the best of you right now. And that's who that guy right. reminds me of because it's Trill Williams, it's Nick Needham. We've talked about this. And I talked about, I put out a tweet today. We have to stop with the whole Noah bullshit. How much more do you want your front office to do? They find Minka. They got to trade him. The same guy found X a few years back. Then he drafts Javon Holland. He finds Brandon Jones. Now he gets Nick Needham undrafted. He finds Trill was on his way. And now it's Cater Kohu. Dude, you're supposed to miss on, on Noah Igbenogamy. Well, you're supposed to also hit on him too. So I'm not surprised if Noah becomes a failure because – You've been hitting on all your other DBs that you either drafted or sign undrafted. All those guys, right. you know, I'm not talking about Rowe or Brand or Jones because those aren't their draft picks. Those are just free agents. 
Okay, but the other guys that they have unearthed or drafted, they've done a magnificent job of finding players in the secondary. So magnificent that now Eric Rowe gets a little banged up and they activate Vernon McKinley the third, which I'm really intrigued with him because Tanner Connor, Vernon McKinley, and and um Cater Kohu. Cater they all yep. missed, they yep. all they all miss time a lot of time in training camp. And yet, right, they were they all they had convictions on all three and kept all three. Yep. So yep. I that's know, a great this, undrafted class. Yeah, yeah. It's like wow, and Trill last year, they had conviction yep. on him. They yep. loved him from the get-go. And sure enough, they kept him on the roster, they protected him, and it was starting to pay off. So it's it's yep. interesting how good they've been in that secondary. Yeah, man, they, there's one thing they really do well. They develop cornerbacks, uh, especially uh, cornerbacks you can't find from anywhere. You know, Cater Koo, uh, Texas A&M Commerce. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't even know that you had a football team at Texas A&M Commerce. Uh, my sister actually graduated there for her master's degree. I didn't even know really? that they had a football team. And my sister <laughs> went to sc- went there to school. I didn't know they had a football team. And so wow. and so this guy came across. And so um, from there, you know, this guy is making making sense like he belongs. And ultimately, it makes you know that they're going to play the best players. Um, and that's that's going to be it. All right, so let me nitpick now. Let's mm-hmm. go on the nitpick segment. I don't I, I've said this before and I, I, I continue to be right and it was proven again today. You don't play Nick Needham on the outside. You keep Nick Needham inside. And from what I've seen the last couple of weeks in the preseason game, he had the tip in the middle of the field. Today, that Hunter Henry play just was that, that, that's just mag- magnificent. I'm playing right. Cater Kahu on the outside because he's the better athlete with the better ball skills in the air. That's what I've noticed from Cater in a very short time. I've seen ball skills and, and ball skills where it's at the high point. That's an incredible right. talent that you must have. And Nick Needham, I'd rather keep him lower on the ground, so keep him on the slot where you don't have to deal with the up in the air much. But if you're going to play on the outsides – then I need X, and I'm going to put Cater Kohu as my starter on the outside, and I'm keeping Nick Needham at the slot. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves through the week. I think a part part of why they did what they did today is you don't you don't always want to give a rookie undrafted kid, a, you know, throw him straight in the fire and have him start. Or, or give Nick the first, first shot at first it. Game. Or just give Nick the first right. shot at it. That's yeah. what they did. And I'm sure like every corner, Nick wants to be more than just a slot corner. He probably believes that he could play outside as well. And so that has been the plan for them uh, over the last few weeks since Byron Jones. It became clear Byron Jones wasn't going to be back. They wanted to give Nick Needham those the first shot out there. And so I'm sure they'll watch tape. Maybe he'll get it again week two. Maybe they'll switch. Um, but I do think that Cater showed a lot. And in his first game and shows that you can trust him. Like it's different when you're doing this in the preseason and when you're doing this in training camp versus doing it in a real game against another team starters against another team who's trying to play hundred percent that gives you, okay, this kick and hang it, you know, it's, it goes from, I think this kick can hang with the big boys to now I know this kick can hang with the big boys. All right, he's a playmaker. Okay. He's a playmaker. Yep. Just like Brandon Jones is a flat out yep. playmaker. And if you see Omar Absolutely. Kelly out there, Make sure you remind him. <laughs> I, I I called his ass out there because he kept telling me all year, all all off season that Brandon Jones isn't a ball hawk, and it's like, come on, dude, that right. guy's all over the damn place. I love that kid, yep. man. Fantastic. All right, what yep. are you working on NFL Network so folks can check you out, my friend? Yeah, good news, Dolphins fans. I am going to be back uh, this week uh, doing a lot of Dolphins coverage. I will be in Baltimore doing the Ravens game uh, with for the Dolphins for NFL Network. So we'll be doing that Sunday. We'll be doing coverage uh, Tuesday uh, on NFL Now, doing a lot of Dolphins, Ravens talk. And, uh, yeah, check out my interview with Tyree Kill if they run it on NFL Network. He said balls and, and wheelbarrow and all that stuff there. So I don't know if it clears our uh, our, uh, our 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 FCC policies. But if, but if so, then uh, it's a pretty good interview. <laughs> That's what I love about where we're at here, bro. We can let it fly a little bit here and have some fun right. with it. But, but, hey, hey, don't lie to us. Deep down inside, you need the Dolphins to keep winning because then that's when they'll say, yeah, stay home, Cam. The Dolphins are a hot so, story. We want you to cover Tua. So, 
So, yes, good news and bad news. The good news, I get to stay home, hang with my girls, which I love. The bad news, today I was down on the field in the suit for four hours and 110 yes. degrees feels like temperature. And so I, I don't know if people saw it on social. I was posting some videos and pictures. And uh, so that's the bad news of being in South Florida. Uh, I would take the 110 over the negative 10, but it's still tough. People always love your job until so they have to wear a suit and tie and, and dress shirt for four hours and, and drench out there on the sidelines in the heat. So yeah, today was yeah, definitely difficult in that respect <laughs> you gotta get to find you gotta go find like a a, a racing uh auto racing you gotta go find to go talk to those people that have race cars yeah. and nascars and all that and tell them to give you that thing that they put inside their suit that, yeah. that kind of keeps them cool bro so that way when you're out there and you're looking sharp in your suit and they're going dude cam's not sweating and that's because inside you have like one of those chill jackets that's just keeping yeah. your body temperature down. I'm telling you. Hey, I said you're going hey, to need it. Everybody hey, out. If, 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 if there's a NASCAR team that has one and would like to sponsor me, I will mention your product. I would love to have it. It's a perfect opportunity. Uh, yes, because I need that. I need whatever. JC Motorsports. JC right. Motorsports <laughs> follows us. We have a relationship with JC Motorsports. So. If you guys okay. are watching, let's, let's 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 help my man. Cam Hit me up. Here. Let's let's talk. If you got that, if you're a suit maker who makes some suits that are going to be super cool, and then I don't burn up on, let's talk. I'm willing to talk anything so that I don't feel like I felt today. <laughs> That's it, man. And by the way, if you guys trademark this shit, I need a small percentage for coming up with the idea here. Okay, so just, right. I'm just saying, right. you guys, you're getting ahead of me here on this already. <laughs> All right, Cam, I appreciate exactly. you, my brother. We'll catch up later on in the week. All right, I appreciate you. Oh, all right. You got it. There you go. Cameron Wolf, baby, and our KSDTCPA Sports Business Report. Don't forget, KSDTCPA, whether it's personal, whether it's business, they do it all, dude, okay? And they've got offices in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Go to them at KSDTCPAs and find out everything that they do. <laughs>